right, today we are going to take apart the Galaxy S4 Mini, which is the cute little brother or sister to the Galaxy S4, made by Samsung. First we're going to take off the back, which reveals the SD card and the SIM card, so we're going to take both those out. And then here's a diagram of the screws, there's 10 of them, Phillips head, so just make sure to take off all of those around the outside. And then this bottom section right here is the loudspeaker, where your ringer and music come from. You can see that the speaker right here is on the left side and there's just two little pins that touch when it's down connected to the motherboard and that's where it gets its uh, feedback from. So you take off the outer ring of the, like the outer plastic of the phone. I found it's easier to put my finger in where the battery goes and kind of pull it away from the back of the screen. And that gives just enough of a gap that I can put my pry tool in there and uh, kind of swing it around the outside edge and unpry it from the foam. Here is the ribbon cable connector for the charging port, which allows the bottom section of the motherboard to lift up. Here is the front camera, and then the earpiece and proximity sensors, and then the headphone jack. All these are like little Legos, they just snap on and off. Then be very careful as you lift the motherboard up because there is one more ribbon cable underneath for the screen, the LCD and digitizer. So I'm going to unsnap that just like a Lego and that releases the screen from the motherboard. Here you can see the motherboard. So the screen you're going to replace as a unit. The part that I just took off is the screen. So if you've cracked it, then that's the part you have to replace. Here is the charging port. I'm going to take my little tweezers and slide them underneath. There's kind of like this sticky glue stuff holding it on. It's pretty tacky, so you can always just reuse it if you're planning on keeping the same charging port. And the microphone is also on this same piece. So when you replace one, you're replacing both parts. Usually these are only like 10 bucks. I'll put them in the video description below as soon as they become available. I get all my parts from Amazon usually. And then as you're putting it in, make sure it lines up with the grooves and the little pin there at the bottom. It's pretty exact placement. To remove the headphone jack, pretty simple. Just pop your little tweezers in and the whole thing pops in and out. Pretty straightforward. I'm pretty glad with how Samsung makes their phones. Everything is pretty fixable. Then there is a little metal bracket holding on to the speaker, proximity sensors, and front camera. So I'm just going to put my razor under there and pop that off which releases the speaker and the proximity sensors. So if your phone doesn't turn off when you put it next to your face during a phone call, this is the part you have to replace, as well as if you can't hear the person, obviously you need to replace your earpiece. And then here's the front-facing camera, another super simple, easy piece to replace. And then to put the middle bracket back into place, I'll give you a better angle on it here in a second, but just grab little guy, and then there's two little grooves up at the top that kind of hold the bracket in place and then a little pin at the bottom. You can see the two little grooves right here as I get that back into place. And then the rear camera is held together by a ribbon cable with a little latch. So I just lifted up the latch, pulled out the camera, put the camera back in. Super simple to replace as well. So if your camera has specs or purple blotches, this is how to fix it. And so the screen as a whole is what I'm connecting to the motherboard again. So remember, if you cracked your screen, you got to replace that whole chunk. Pulling off the charging port, the cameras, and then putting them on your replacement screen, and then putting it all back together again. I'm lining up the ribbon cable with the port, with the connection port on the motherboard, and snapping it into place like a Lego. And then folding it back over onto the phone, making sure that all my little ribbon cables from the earpiece and the proximity sensors are on the right side of the motherboard so they're not pinched underneath. Setting that down and then there's you have to make sure it lines up at the top so it sits flat down with your phone. You shouldn't feel it bow underneath your fingers when you press down on it. Anyway, latch down to all of my little ribbon cable connectors from the top. Remember there's the headphone jack, the speaker, and the camera. And here's the charging port connector down here at the bottom, latching that into place as well. And then the back goes on the phone. 
I'm a big fan of how Samsung's done these backs recently. It's the same with the S4, the Note 3, and uh, the Mega, some of their newer phones. Um, once the phone's been opened, you really can't tell. It snaps back pretty flush with the front screen again, as you can see. And then I'm popping in the back speaker as well. Just kind of leveraging that into place with my pry tool. And there's a screw diagram again. Popping the battery back into place. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. I respond fairly regularly. Don't forget to like if this video helped you. And don't forget to subscri subscribe. It does mean a lot to me. If you have any questions, make sure to leave the comments. Or you can hit me up on Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. I hope to see you around. Thanks for watching.